the meet we proudly welcome our guest mr gokul mahajan who will be speaking on the topic the evolution of process safety from 1974 to 2021 we would also be having a brief question and answer session towards the end and the attendees are requested to write their questions in the chat box handing over to you sir thanks thanks for this uh, uh, nice words and the introduction am i audible yes sir you are audible yeah yeah so yes welcome everybody welcome to the today's uh, kme summit webinar series and the second webinar uh, so the title of the webinar is the evolution of process safety from 1974 to 2021 uh and it is a great pleasure for me to interact with the creative and the brilliant uh, minds of the iit patna and those who are attending across the nation it is a great pleasure indeed and in today's topic not only we are going to discuss the uh, basics of process safety or how the process safety has been evolved uh, throughout the years and and my intention is not just to deliver that one hour lecture uh, but my intention is to make you aware about the importance of process safety to uh, uh, make you aware about the industrial chemical indian chemical ind uh, industry how uh, it is uh, just uh, how the chain of uh, accidents happening uh, from uh, several years and still Uh, we are facing a lot of challenges. We are facing, uh, still we are losing the lot of uh, leaves because of the industrial accidents and the catastrophes that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Even I can say in this pandemic. So, uh, before I start, let me uh, clear to you. In this today's session, you are going to learn a very much important uh, part because all of you. at some point of time in your life you are going to be a part of chemical industry and you should be proud of that so when you will be associated with the chemical industry directly or indirectly you have to ensure that how i can maintain the process safety with the personal safety many times we are more concerned about the personal safety but our focus should also be with the process safety and today's session we will have the same focus so i will just uh, get you through the agenda we will have the definition of process safety uh, considering that uh, we have to start from the abcd of the process safety then concepts of hazard and risk then how the process safety got born birth of process safety then world's worst industrial disaster how the world got hampered by these disasters and how it got impacted and what were the lessons that learned from the industrial accident and how we strengthen our process safety rules and regulation globally then what is the current status of the industrial accidents in india up to this part we will just talk about the problems and the history that already happened but from the process safety management and then current study uh, case study of the process, uh, uh, process safety management area wise analysis and the third point opportunities and challenges for psm implementation in india we are going to look at the solution what could be the best solution and how it is important to have the process safety management implementation at your work facility and then last part in today's session we will look at the role of engineering fraternity to the safer indian industry because you and me uh, we are the uh, the people who can take the responsibility on their shoulders and can make the people safer at their workplace safer at in the indian chemical industry and that we are going to see how how, how we can do that then uh, final process safety learning for young engineers what you can just uh, look at or how you can learn the process safety what are the references or books or some uh, part of your curriculum we will discuss on that also okay so with this agenda view let me start today's session with process safety definition okay so by words itself you could understand uh, being a chemical engineer mechanical engineer or even instrumentation engineer process safety is a discipline framework for managing the integrating of operating system process handling hazardous substances by applying so it is all about the operating systems and process handling by applying good design principles engineering and operating practices so what actually process safety do 
process safety deals with the prevention and control of incidents that have potential to release hazardous materials or the energy. Such in incidents can cause toxic effects, fire, explosion, and could ultimately result in serious injuries to people, property, and environment. So when we talk about the process safety, we focus always on three elements. Keep this in mind for always and throughout your life. Process safety always focus on three elements, people, environment, and then property. And now recently people talk about the fourth one also, the reputation, the reputation of your organization. Okay. So shortly if I explain you, process safety focuses on preventing fires, explosions, and accidental chemical releases in chemical process facilities or other facilities dealing with the hazardous materials such as refineries, oil and gas facility, whether it is onshore or offshore, and production installations. So I talk about the process safety focuses on preventing fire explosion and the toxic releases. Okay, how it can prevent or how it can minimize that uh, possibility of that uh, happenings or the events. Now, before I move to the process safety uh, uh, paradigm again, let me give you some basic uh, terminologies like what is hazard and what is risk. When you get the uh, concept of hazard and risk, you will easily come to know that process safety is nothing but identifying hazard and eliminating the hazards so that the uh, possibility of the risk will be reduced and automatically you can prevent the fire explosion and the accidental release from happening. So let's have a look at hazard. What is hazard? A hazard is any source of potential damage, harm or adverse health effect on something or someone. Simply hazard is anything that which have a potential to cause a harm or adverse health effects to personal. That simply Hello. Hello. Yeah. So okay. So let's have examples of hazards uh, and their effects. So as I explained, hazard is anything that has a potential to cause the ha harm to the people, environment, and the even property. Okay. Again, when I'm going to discuss about the risk, when I'm going to discuss about the hazard, when I'm going to uh, discuss about the damages the uh, three elements will come into the picture. Always uh, remember this forever, people, environment, and the property. So let's take an example of uh, hazard. So let's take a substance that is a benzene because uh, you know, uh, uh, if many of you have not visited the industry yet, you may be working with the n number of chemicals in the, your laboratories uh, 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 on the uh, yearly basis, okay? So benzene is a substance an example of hazard is benzene, which is a chemical hazard here because the nature of hazard is chemical is a chemical. So it is a chemical hazard and what harm it can cause to you. It can cause the leukemia if got exposed to longer uh, terms for long terms. You got exposure, then you can have the leukemia. Let's take another example. Workplace hazard source of energy, electricity. Electricity is a, also a kind of hazard because it can cause your shock or electrocution. If I take the second, third example, which is a process, actual activity, nothing but the welding process. What it can cause you harm? If you uh, expose to the metal fumes, you may get the eye injuries or the eye soreness. So anything existing in this world on day to day basis uh, that can cause you harm and having the potential to cause you harm is a hazard. A simple example I want to give you, if you, uh, if you are cooking uh, and you are in the kitchen and uh, you are cutting the vegetables by uh, uh, some knife, uh, then uh, you may get cut on your finger. So knife is also a hazard, which is a physical hazard. And uh, you may get an uh, injury, you may get an cut on the finger. So as simple as that. So remember, hazard is anything which has a potential to cause the harm to the personal. And if you uh, think in the construct of the environment, and property also that can be applied. Then what is the risk? Risk is the chance or the probability that person will be harmed or experience an adverse health effect if exposed to the hazard. Okay, so now if hazard is existing there and person 
is exposed to that hazard so how is the proper probability or likelihood that that person will get injured that is nothing but the risk means possibility of getting injury from the existing hazard is nothing but the risk and what are the factors that can influence the risk nature of exposure how much a person is exposed to the hazardous things or condition for example suppose you are cutting the vegetables on daily basis so there are uh, more chances there is a probability that you may get a uh, cut on your finger once in a week or once in a month and if if somebody is just entering into into the kitchen for once in a year so definitely there will be less possibility means nature of exposure how frequently you got exposed to that hazard how person is exposed whether uh, suppose uh, let's take example of chemical you are working in the laboratories and the working with the chemicals in number of chemicals benzene toluene acetone uh, organic solvents no organic solvents so what kind of contact it is are you uh, exposed to the chemical directly uh, touching to your screen or uh, did you breathe in the fumes of that chemicals or what way you got to expose that is also will define the extent of the risk and third one severity of effect for example one substance may cause a skin cancer while another may cause a skin irritation cancer is a much more serious effect than the irritation now benzene as i given you the example of benzene as a hazard chemical hazard if you expose to the benzene like a skin uh, irritation you may face or you may get the eye irritations if you you got exposed to the fumes of benzene but if you are working in the chemical industry and the benzene production or production associated with the uh, benzene uh, processing let's say you are working there for a uh, 10 year that kind of chronic exposure I mean long term exposure even may cause you the cancer leukemia so again the depends how, what is the severity of the effects okay and this parameter will define the and this parameter will influence the degree or likelihood of the risk how risky it is and finally risk is nothing but how severe the outcomes are how bad the outcomes are and how frequently they are occurring nothing but the risk so again moving to the now i hope that you got clear with hazard and the risk hazard is the anything that having the potential to cause you the harm and risk is nothing but probability of the uh, getting harmed by that hazard after clearing these two points now we will get to know what is the role of process safety to identifying uh, the hazard and eliminating the hazard and finally uh, 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 mitigating the risk now before moving to the again the uh, uh, importance and the objectives of process safety first let's look how the process safety born and from which century it does it started so taking birth at uh, dupont black powder works in the early days of 19th century process safety has always been an important consideration in chemical engineering and you people know we know and uh, everybody should know the two words uh, being a chemical engineer i think the aiche american institute of chemical engineers which founded in 1908 uh, and has expanded this critical aspect through annual symposia on safety in ammonia and related plant in early 1950 so aiche was an organization who took the responsibility to exploring the uh, process safety and they finally uh, try to have some events uh, to have the discussion and to bring the best possible out of the discussion and uh, the result out of which was they uh, organized the symposia in 1950 and then the loss prevention symposium was held in 1967 so these activities led to the formation of aich safety and health revision in 1979 just see the Uh, hierarchy how they proceeded further year to year 1908 establishment of aiche 1950 first symposium 1967 second symposium 1979 they had the aict safety and health division and then the situation come in the 1984 the bhopal gas tragedy in india and after that taking some lessons from that incident uh, 
uh, AICC form Center for Chemical Process Safety in 1985 as an industry alliance to share and enhance the process safety expertise in the industry. So friends, when I talk about process safety or being an Indian, being a chemical engineer, what comes to my mind first? As, as soon as I uttered the word process safety, the Bhopal gas tragedy will come uh, in front of my eyes. Why? Because I will uh, just let you know in, uh, in the next slides. The Bhopal incident caused the information, uh, sorry, caused the formation of many more national safety agencies and regulatory bodies worldwide. And we are going to see that in the next slides, coming slides. And uh, we had written this uh, article. Uh, I had written this with uh, our general manager. Uh, just uh, saying the uh, uh, important parameters, how we can compute the uh, India's uh, process safety crisis. And these are the two organizations, AICG and its technology alliance, CCPS, uh, who are uh, uh, taking so much efforts to promote the process safety since uh, 1985. Center of Chemical Process Safety is playing a very big role to enhance the uh, capabilities in the process safety to promote the process safety and to implement the process safety. So this is the way process safety uh, uh, got born and uh, evolved since the uh, last 50-40 uh, years. So what is the importance of process safety? Process safety is about understanding the hazards and risk. Just recently I told you, first, as you understand the, what is the hazards and what is the risk associated with your facility, associated with your workplace. Then and then you can think managing the risk by providing the appropriate layer of protections to reduce the frequency. Again, the possibility or probability and the severity means impact of that incident. And second thing, process safety is also about learning from the incidents when they happen and do the things or take the action such a way that it will never happen again in the future. So in, in, in uh, uh, process safety is important because you don't want or you don't uh, want to see the catastrophe like this. The big, big uh, fires, the toxic gas release, just like happened in the LG polymers in 2020 and explosions. So basically just keep in mind Process safety just focuses out, focuses on understanding the hazards and risk, managing the risk by providing the different uh, layer of protections uh, to reduce its frequency and the severity. And uh, we learn always from the incidents when they happen and we try to execute the phenomenon or the procedure so that we won't face such a kind of accidents in the future. So now we saw process safety, uh, uh, how it got born and what is the importance of process safety, but why we require this uh, uh, concepts, why we uh, require process safety. And the reason is the world's worst industrial accidents since uh, in the 70s and 80s till today. Even last week there had a big uh, fire and explosion in the refinery in foreign. So if you look at the this uh, World Wars industrial accidents uh, starting from 1974, Flixborough, England, and that was the chemical plant, which was the uh, explosion that happened and which killed 28 people. Starting from the 1974, coming uh, to the Bhopal, India, having the chemical plant facility and giving the toxic release of uh, methyl isocyanate. And my friends, it is saying that more than 3000 people died, but that is immediately. In the span of 25 to uh, 20 years, almost 40,000 people died because of the chronic exposure to the methyl isocyanate, the lethal and the deadly gas, which was released in the Bhopal gas tragedy. So this is a series and chain of events. We are not going to look every uh, incidents in detail, but uh, I will just take you through the some important uh, accidents that uh, really shape the process safety development. And we are not talking about only the 1974 or 1977 back in the 70s or 80s. If you look at the figures in 2020 LG polymer, uh, which I talked recently, the toxic gas release of the styrene, 12 fatalities and more than 1000 people were exposed and uh, got uh, 
hospitalized out of it. The second, another one, the the world's one of the dangerous and the deadliest incident that happened, the uh, Beirut explosion in Le uh, Lebanon. That was the chemical storage of ammonium nitrate caught exploded. And if you look at the videos, you can see it, its intensity and which kill almost 190 people. And in this year also, uh, there was an incident in uh, Pune, uh, Maharashtra, India where uh, 18 people got killed in the fire of the chemical plant. So if you see the journey of last 47 years or 50 years, continuously we are going to face the industrial accidents and we are uh, losing the uh, lives of the people. We are getting the damage to the environment and we are uh, losing the property and uh, everything. So how uh, the process safety expert or chemical engineers or the group of engineers came together and they developed the process safety. How the lessons were learned from this kind of uh, uh, de uh, deadliest accidents. So I have just will take you through the two to three major industrial accidents and how the safety got established, how the process safety development happens. I will first take you through the Flex Rock 1974. As I told you, that was the explosion. Then Civeso Italy, uh, which was the toxic uh, release of the gases and that caused a burn to the more than 400 people. And third one, Bhopal gas tragedy in India in 1984. All these uh, incidents happened and then uh, people uh, tried to establish the process safety and the strain strengthening the process safety in different different way. So why I just given the title evolution of process safety uh, from 1974 to 2021 because uh, prior to the 1970 or the in the 70s or uh, 60s, what was the situation of the process safety uh, globally? There was a gradual growth in the industrial safety programs in the US. The regulations were not all administered, administrated very well there and standards varied from state to state in the US itself or it varied even from country to country globally. And when this flex happened in 1974, that changed the uh, complete uh, era for the process safety and we are going to look into it now. So flex accident happened in the UK in 1974. Actually, uh, this was the first uh, worst incident that was experienced in the uh, globally. Uh, actually, initially the Flix Borax facility uh, was the fertilizer of, of, uh, plant, but later they changed it to the, uh, so did some modification and made it for the nylon synthesis. And that was handled by the NAPRO UK located in the Flix Borax. Uh, and you know the caprolactam. And what happened actually, an improperly designed bypass line caused the leakage of 50 ton cyclohexane. And cyclohexane is a kind of highly flammable uh, chemical which formed the cloud in the seconds upon contact with the ignition source, a resulting explosion killed 28 employees and damaged over 1800 uh, buildings in the surrounding area. And in number of injured people were around 90. So actually there was a facility, there was the five reactor and one reactor had a problem. There had some crack in that reactor and they wanted to uh, make the uh, maintenance on that reactor. So they just uh, detached that reactor and they made a bypass line to get operations on the remaining four reactors. And during that bypassing operation without uh, confirming the process safety checks, without confirming the test on the actual uh, processing, they just started the operation and result of which was the big explosion taking the leaves of the 28 people. So let's have a small video and see how, uh, how bad it was and how it engulfed the complete facility and not only that uh, uh, on-site facility, but off-site how that uh, around 1800 buildings were exposed to the fire and the that smoke see how how the fire uh, uh, engulfed the complete facility and how the smoke uh, was uh, uh, e just evolving from that facility 
and how big cloud of smoke was just formed over the complete facility and the area in the several kilometers. So yes, so this was the first incident that uh, uh, given the message to the world that it is the need of process safety to implement at the facility. And the era of process safety started. So let's look what where the lesson learned from the Flexborough 1974 and how the process safety uh, started to change, how the rules and regulations started to evolve from the this incident. Uh, after this incident, the UK government uh, just uh, established the committee, which was uh, led by Roger Parker, uh, uh, which published the report in the 1975 post accident investigation report and which was known as Fix uh, Brog uh, Disaster Report of the court. And this incident highlighted the need of the structural assessment of processes when making the changes to the equipment. And now we call to that process is management of change. So the most important process hazard analysis, how you hazard the analysis, how st structured way you do the assessment when you make the some changes in the existing facility in the brownfield facility and that process we know management of change and this concept uh, arrived from the this incidents uh, learning lessons. Then MOC management of change is commonly accepted in the industry as a required and critical system. However, the author's observation is that it is often poorly executed and still prominent factors in many industry. So after having the MOC uh, concept from this, again, it is a matter of how confidently you implement it, how seriously you take it and how seriously you implement it. So but yeah, one thing is was very clear that management of change was in the action after this incident. The again, the one more uh, addition in the rules was Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, which was you know uh, uh, induced shortly after this incident. And uh, if this could have been in the uh, place before this accident, then we mean uh, may, we uh, would not have seen this kind of accidents in the 1974. So management of change and the health safety work act Hawa Sawa 1974 was the real contribution by this accident and that is how we proceed further. The second in, uh, incident, uh, the CBSO disaster that happened in Italy in 1976. In the last table, you couldn't see this uh, CBSO disaster because those table were just showing the world's so the world's worst industrial disaster which had the maximum number of fatality. In this particular incident, there were no fatality, but there were the exposure to the 400 local guys uh, being treated for the chemical burns. And you can see the face of this uh, a small child, how he got burnings on the uh, that his face. So what actually happened on the 10th July, 1976, the unattended reactor of the IC Mesa Chemical Works, which was the organization who was handling this activity, released the gaseous emission of the several chemicals, and this included a number of chemicals like sodium salt of uh, trichlorophenol, sodium hydroxide, sodium sodium glycoxide, uh, sodium oxalate. Okay, uh, the emission also includes the 2374 tetrachloro dibenzope dioxin the highly toxic substance this was which actually caused this burning sensation to the people and burnings on the faces and the different parts of the body and this resulted in more than 400 local being treated for chemical burns and if you look after uh, approximately three weeks after the incident people in this area started to be affected with the chloracne and the characteristic symptoms of the dioxin poisoning as I say, PA dioxin is the highly toxic substance and it, uh, that caused the big uh, impact on the people and almost it reached up to the 17 square kilometer around, around the facility. 
and uh, made, made the contaminations. So how the chemical release uh, happened? Uh, definitely chemical release was uh, as a result of exothermic reaction, but origin of that exotherm is still the some cause of conjecture. There was no fatality, but 400 people had the chemical burns. But this incident uh, put a lot of impact on the European Union and European Union started to think critically how they can avoid this kind of incidents. And then they learned the lesson from the CVSO disaster 1976 and how they introduced the CVSO directive. European Commission developed the legislation focusing on prevention and control of major chemical incidents and which is today is popularly known as CVC, CVSO directive, which is widely followed in the European Commission and UK too. Then first they introduced, uh, when this happened in the 1976, immediately the CVSO directive was adopted in 1982, some six years after the, the incident. And again, they made some changes and uh, bro brought the amendments in the 1987 and 1988 to increase the scope, to enhance the scope, to cover the storage of dangerous substances in response to the Bhopal tragedy and the Sandoz fire in the Basel, Switzerland in 1986. Uh, as, uh, as, as you can look at that, CBSO directive first came in 1982 and immediately in 1984 there was a Bhopal tragedy. And after Bhopal tragedy, they introduced these uh, amendments of 1987 and 1988. Then again, in 1996, CVSO second directive was adopted and recently uh, into 2015, the CVSO th third uh, part of the uh, that was implemented, which was suggested actually in the 2012. So this incident, though there was not fatality, but it gave the very good uh, set of directions and the regulations, which is now uh, follow followed worldwide, yeah, mostly in European uh, Union, it is a uh, European Commission and European Union uh, follow it on a mandatory basis. And that was the big learning from the CVSO disaster. So now the world's worst industrial disaster so far till date, even if you look at the Flixborough was there or CVSO or in later in 1988, there was the uh, Piper Alpha offshore uh, disaster or in 2005, there was Texas refinery explosion but still the Bhopal gas tragedy is the deadliest and the world's worst industrial mishap. Why it is? Let's have a look on the statistics and the figures. So my friends, what was the impact of this particular incident? As I, I, I told you earlier also, there were almost 4,000 or 3,800 deaths that were immediately within a span of few days happened in the Bhopal and over 16,000 were claimed as per the source of Wikipedia. And nobody knows how was the exact digit of that deaths. But after even 20 or 25 years, if you see almost 40,000 people died because of exposure to this methyl isocyanate. And this is the tragedy, how actually it happened. You know, there was this, I will just explain you in shortly how it happened. This was, these were the three storage tanks containing the, uh, uh, the methyl isocyanate, which was the intermediate product actually, MIC, which was required to produce the final form of the fertilizer. Okay. So there was a three tanks, 610, 611, 619. Uh, the capacity of uh, each was 40 ton of 610. 50 ton of 611 and uh, 6192. These 611 and 619 were empty and 610 was there. Okay, and actually here the reaction happened. Accidentally, the water got introduced into these tanks and methyl isocyanate got reacted with the water, producing the uh, the, the fumes and uh, through the uh, runway reaction. And a lot of it was evolved as a problem matter of the runway reaction. So why this actually happened? Okay, there was also refrigerator refrigeration system would uh, who could uh, stop or uh, uh, reduce the rate of reactions uh, when the water came into the contact with the MIC. But this refrigeration system uh, in which the prion was the refrigerant 
was shut down in June 1984 to save the money for cost cutting purpose. So this safety measure was removed already when the incident happened on the 2nd December and the midnight of the 3rd December or starting of the 3rd December. Immediately, even though there was a release of this uh, uh, gas after getting contact with the uh, uh, water, there was a scrubber which, uh, who could uh, uh, scrub and detoxify the coming vapors, but this when gas scrubber was turned off. The second safety measure was also not in place when the incident happened. The third one, flare tower, which is designed to burn up the gas, but connecting pipe had been removed for its maintenance. And the water curtains were there, not high enough to reach a gas. So this way, almost six safety systems were there who got failed or either they were not in action, either they were not in the position to help or they were just uh, uh, bypassed. And that is why this Bhopal gas tragedy happened in 1984. So if I take you through quickly through the description of event, uh, in the night of the 2nd uh, December, washing of relief wall lines uh, were done without the isolation wall. Okay, the operator noticed that lines are blocked and MIC plant supervisor their order washing to continue. Now they were doing the washing of the vessels, okay. Pressure in the 610 tank was the 2 psi and 610 failed to get the pressurized. You know, in the second sh uh, shift, mostly it changes to the 10 pm or the 11 pm in India. Again, at the 11.45, the shift was changed and water entry from RBVH to PVH and the tank. So when the washing process was going on at the 11.45, because of the interruption in the process, because of this uh, shift change, there was inclusion of the water into the tank. Okay, and immediately at 11 PR, the operator could notice that the tank pressure in the 610 reached up to 10 PSI. And in the midnight at 11.30 PM, the first leak of MIC detected. Plant supervisor notified it about the high pressure in MIC leak. Then MIC operator see the yellow drip from RVVH. Okay, so what actually happened in the midnight? Supervisor ordered stopping of the washing operations. So they stopped the washing process because of the MIC leak at the 12 a.m. Means almost two and a half hour after the washing process. So again, though there was the this kind of uh, emergency or the incident of leakage, they went to the uh, tea break operator and at the even five minutes that there were the attempt to start the vent gas scrubber pump because they want to just scrub that uh, gas and detoxify it. Okay. But blind superintendent on being informed about the leak and arrives at the spot. But the attempt of the vent gas scrubber was not successful that time. Again, coming to the 12.30 a.m., pressure gauge reading over range, concrete tanks get very hot. Okay. And like this, the pressure started increase, 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 and suddenly there was the uh, time where the sealed wall resetted, and almost 40 to 45 tons of the MIC escaped from the that tank and spread it across the country, across the city of the Popal. Okay, so you see how if I see the chain event, the slip bind not installed, there was no slip bind, pressure gauge. Reading ignored, the pressure gauge reading was not observed. Temperature measurement, when there is a uh, runway reaction, the temperature will uh, build up automatically, but there was no temperature measurement uh, on the, uh, the tanks. Pressurized tank, tank depressurized by leaky wall. So the when you perform the depressurization process, okay, uh, to uh, uh, avoid the blast or the explosion uh, incident, but that wall itself was the leaky. And that is why uh, nothing worked that day and the MIC got reacted to water, the reaction happened. And you know, the refrigeration system was not in action. Cooling system was switched off, which tends, which led to the thermal runway reaction. And when gas scrubber was not there to help to scrub the gas to detoxify it because it was in maintenance. Flare system, again, it couldn't help. It was in maintenance. Water curtains, 
not tall enough and finally the deadliest got a gas escape through the tank so let's have a look on this uh, small video December 2nd 1984 the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant in Bhopal India water inadvertently entered a storage tank containing more than 80,000 pounds of methyl isocyanate or MIC which was known to react violently with water this caused a runaway reaction that overheated the tank and resulted in a massive toxic gas release a dense lethal cloud drifted over the city of Bhopal exposing hundreds of thousands of people to deadly MIC and other chemicals an estimated 3,800 people died immediately and tens of thousands were injured eventually thousands more died from toxic gas related illnesses in what had become history's worst industrial accident investigations found many process safety management deficiencies including the absence of a process hazard analysis poorly maintained equipment and safety systems a lack of emergency response planning and inadequate training for operators handling the deadly mic but others saw a deeper root cause the father of process safety the late dr trevor kletz wrote mic wasn't a raw material or a product but an intermediate storing it was convenient but not essential it could have been used as it was made then the worst leak would have been a few kilograms the huge mic release at bhopal was a watershed event in the drive to make plant designs inherently safer in the wake of bhopal congress enacted new laws to increase chemical emergency preparedness and to require companies to develop process safety and risk management programs and to report their worst case release scenarios Congress also established the Chemical Safety Board to investigate chemical accidents and recommend measures to prevent catastrophes. But despite these positive actions in the 1990s, the United States continues to experience serious chemical accidents. Process safety management regulations are in need of reform. There must be more emphasis on preventing the occurrence of major chemical accidents through safer design. Responding to emergencies and punishing people after the fact are not enough even now so yeah so my friends uh, it is just not matter of just going through the the the, the statistics and the uh, uh, figures and the facts but it is just uh, it is a serious sense when this kind of incident happened how bad it could be it just not kill 3000 people 3000 people is not a small number but over the span of 25 years the death uh, digit raised to the 40000 and that is why process safety is much more important and same has been emphasized in the csb uh, video so as i said bhopal disaster is said to be a worst industrial incident till date the world has seen and how it changes the things as we know as i uh, 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 just uh, shown you the how the cvso directive was updated in 1987 and 1988 amendments after the bhopal gas tra tragedy us the bhopal was a triggering event for the development and implementation of the process safety management standard as well as the establishment of us chemical safety board though they just thought the uh, establishing the us chemical safety board actually it uh, started functioning in the 1998 but yes, the countries, not only the India, not only the UK and USA, across the globe, the people were just shocked and they got the heavy vibrations to their thinking process. How bad could be the chemical incidents? And that is why USA then suggested to AICG and AICG brought the Center of Chemical Process Safety in 1985. So from 1985, Chemical Center of Chemical Process Safety, very well known as CCPS. If you don't know that, you just go uh, on the internet, check, check its functionality, how they are serving to the uh, the global community at the greater level for the process safety, and how they are taking the efforts to make the in, uh, not only Indian chemical industry but the global chemical industries safe. 
to work and uh, to spend the time uh, for, for for your working hours so bhopal what actually bhopal given the uh, the message to us bhopal highlighted uh, the concept of inherently safer design and for you, for your information uh, the inherently safer design or inherently safe approach is nothing but that rather than uh, uh, controlling the hazard just avoid the hazard so in simple words prevention is better than cure nothing but the inherently safer approach okay and this concept was again uh, highlighted by the bhopal gas tragedy and it being noted that mic did not need to be stored on site as same, same mentioned in the video it could have been consumed as it was produced and this concept was given by father of process safety respected late dr travel clades in 2001 and he very well quoted what you don't have can't leak if you don't have the inventory to look there will be no leakage no release and we could avoid the bhopal gas tragedy but unfortunately it happened and not only the uh, incidents happen in the 80s 70s 90s but let's have a look at the recent incident in india styrene vapor release uh, at lg polymers in vizag andhra pradesh which is again known as the mini bhopal gas tragedy because of release of the toxic chemical happened on the 7th may 2020 uh, and vizag there were the 12 fatality and almost 1100 people uh, exposed to that styrene vapor and almost uh, i i think of uh, uh, 500 people were hospitalized immediately similarly as you saw different different uh, reasons how the safety was bypassed in the bhopal tragedy the same thing uh, were noted here even after the 46 uh, uh, years or i should say 36 37 years of the bhopal gas tragedy still we have uh, the things happening day to day basis and it is the things to worry it is not uh, uh, it is the real things to worry because even in last 36 years we couldn't have that much control and we didn't learn from the history though we are seeing and saying that yes this were the lesson learned and this were the lesson learned but it is much more to gain and particularly in our country in india there is much much need to bring the safety regulations to the uh, india but quickly let's have the look what were the reason that uh, got the release of this styrene in the lg polymers the tank design again the matter of the inherently safer design rather than controlling the leak rather than putting the lot of mitigative measure just think about the preventive measure the think about the tank design tank temperature measurement and control recirculation and the refrigeration system inhibitor content polymerization and the runway reaction so my friends as we seen uh, the uh, tragedy happening in 2022 let's look how globally the india stands in the industrial accidents my motto to have the topic today i could choose any uh, hardcore chemical engineering topic uh, from the chemical reaction engineering or thermodynamics or the mass transfer because though i am in the uh, this field from last 7 years i am still very close to do my, my basics basics of chemical engineering but how, why i chose this topic of webinar you look at the figures india almost having 6885 deaths in the last one decade and which is highest in the world even though usa having the 5000 and the russia having the 5743 but we are at the top we are at the highest risk when it comes to the process safety or when it comes to the safety at the workplace in the chemical industry and that is why for us including me you uh, young young graduates it is very very important to think critically how you can bring out uh, the thoughts how you can think critically how can you contribute to the safety processes and how you can ensure that people working at the facility are safe and they will come back safely at the home in the evening so that is really a matter of concern here so again here if i look if if we look at the the numbers you know the uh, chemical industry hub if you look at in india that is the, the mostly gujarat and then maharashtra 
and the the digit tells itself the number of fatal accidents in gujarat if you look at 17 18 19 the this walsad vadodara rajkot bharuch these are the chemical industry hub okay and here the almost ankleshwar uh, where the gidcs are situated which is a chemical hub of the chemical industries indian chemical industries these are the number of the dates 221 249 29 206 272 230 236 188 and if you look at the numbers at 00 it doesn't mean nothing happened there it clearly is, uh, says that the data was not available nothing was reported in this two years but accidents were definitely in the industries similarly in maharashtra the fire explosion gas leakages serious accidents fatal accidents were a part of uh, the last decade so we all uh, who are working in the chemical industry or the people like you who are going to be a part of chemical industry in coming 2 years 4 years or 5 years doesn't matter whether you will be associated with the industry directly or indirectly doesn't matter uh, uh, even you work in the commercial uh, uh, aspect uh, you when even you uh, work with the techno commercial aspect and you don't exactly uh, work with the manufacturing processes but still you are associated with the some kind of risk and not only this but so many deaths in the last uh, pandemic period also even in 2021 it is just continued and i told you in march 2021 there was incident in pune there was blast in the uh, industry very well known agrochemical industry there were so many incidents uh, in the last 3 months who took the i think more than 100 lives in this last 6 month january 2021 uh, till date and this is the figures about the january 2020 to august 2020 see andhra pradesh assam delhi gujarat haryana himachal pradesh madhya pradesh maharashtra every state uh, facing the industrial accidents and even i should say this was uh, just just escalated in the this covid pandemic and this is the thing story so now so far we have discussed uh, process safety definition uh, hazard and uh, risk then we discuss about the process safety uh, birth then we discuss about the worldwide industrial uh, accidents then we saw how the industrial accidents uh, uh, happened how did this accident happen how they contributed as a part of learning uh and we saw the recent accidents in india in states of india in last decade how bad it was for our country but now let's focus on the solution we always can discuss for the hurts on the problems but it is also essential to have the discussion over the solution and if i uh, see the ultimate solution to all this kind of uh, situation or the existing uh, things then process safety management is the uh, process safety management system is the solution and there is no option other than the process safety management implementation so quickly i will take you through i know that we have a, a, a we, we are short of time so process safety management is a regulation uh, uh, introduced by a us uh, occupational safety and health administration first in 1992 a process in which any activity or combination of activities including any use storage manufacturing handling or on site movement of highly hazardous chemicals as identified by osha nothing but occupational health safety and health administration and environmental Prote protection agency of the usa epa so what they do they brought the concept of process safety management of highly hazardous chemicals in 1990 on 17 july and what it was containing actually it was containing the requirement of management of hazard associated with the processes using highly hazardous chemicals to help assure safe and helpful workplaces helpful workplaces so this was the first time the concept of process safety management was in action which was actually adopted in 1992 and there are different type of uh, uh, process safety management systems around the globe Uh, as i told you osha's uh, process safety management focuses on the 14 elements 14 aspects which are they think very important when it comes to the process safety then aicchs ccps which thinks on the 20 element 
uh, risk based process safety which is very well known uh, nowadays and uh, then you yeah, european union energy institute also having the tw uh, 20 elements then canadian society having 12 elements then dupont having their own risk management model which is known as the dupont's model which having the 14 elements so across the globe there are different different kinds of uh, process safety management systems so quickly i will take you the oshas uh, ccps uh, for risk based process safety psm and then dupont's module and then just will tell you i know uh, being at the stage in the academics uh, I, i i think you are in the uh, graduation year first year second final year okay so just try to have the keywords in the mind psm hazard risk that will be sufficient for you and as in the coming years and coming days you will be come across this terminology in your profession definitely you will come to know the, the detail formatting so osha uh, we know that it is a us uh, agency occupational safety and health administration which has the 14 element how the element are employee involvement process safety information this is the most important parameter and in our my last uh, 50 minutes discussion i not talked about a single second on this process hazard analysis pha which involves the different different kinds of studies like a hazop hazards and operability studies then uh, uh, what if analysis then inventory analysis fault tree analysis checklist uh, the, the the so many uh, process hazard analysis are there and this is the most important element of the this uh, process safety management system then all this process processing uh, uh, standard operating procedure which is known as sept uh, sop then training to the worker to make them skillful what should be your strategy your regulations with respect to contractor what methodology should be followed when you start the facility after the shutdown how you have to ensure the mechanical integrity in the system how should be the process with the hot work permit and what should be the management of change as we know this concept came from the flex bureau and which is the one important element of the psm then what should be your plan for the incident uh, incident investigation uh, how you have to be prepared for the emergency planning and response sorry suppose there is a big incident happened okay and that will happen suddenly but are you prepared for the emergency how you will tackle how will response to that situation and how you can take control over the situation that nothing but the emergency planning and response which is again the very important parameter and the element in the psm system compliance audit how you are complied with the different standards and the regulations of the government and finally trade secrets so all these kind of elements is nothing but the psm so psm is not just a single study it is the ocean of the the uh, things that cumulatively form the safe uh, culture in the industry if implemented very well Well, uh, second is uh, ccps risk based process safety definitely osha started and initiated the process safety management to again purpose keeping in mind to identifying the hazard eliminating the hazard to avoid the occurrence of the fire explosion and toxic gas release and to keep the people environment and property safe at the workplace but the concept of a ccps is quite uh, means what i can say innovative they segregated all these elements in the <coughs> sorry different different work areas so what were that four work areas commit to process safety this five elements understand and hazard the risk hazard and the risk the second a work area third manage the risk third sec, sorry this second this third manage the risk and fourth how you learn from the experience so whatever 20 elements are there in the ccps process safety management system they categorize it in the four different work areas now it coming to the dupont's psm and risk management model they have, they have also the same concept same uh, models and the elements into the psm system but represented some diff different way and innovatively so you see the center of will is nothing but the management leadership and commitment for implementing the psm program this core of the this circle center of the wheel 
spokes all these spokes like a wheel 14 psm element grouped by technology personal and facilities telling you the one one individual element and rim operating excellence achieved through the operational discipline this rim which is quite important operating excellence that can be achieved through the operational discipline how discipline we are how dedicated the top management are how dedicated the workers are and what are the initiatives of the your top management with respect to the process safety so this way we can think the different different process safety management or systems but the final aim final motto is the same to make the people safer at the workplace because people the human being is the first uh, element that we think over uh, uh, as compared to the environment and the property so if you look uh, as we discussed the ucil bhopal union ucil means the union carbide india limited was the organization which was in the this uh, bhopal uh, fertilizer industry and that happened but mostly known as the bhopal gas tragedy and the lg polymer wise that so if i look psm area wise root causes for the incidents then i can get the this good table uh so as i told you what ccpsd did they very well uh, segregated that all the elements in the core work areas like management commitment understanding the hazard and risk operational uh, uh, properties and the learning from the experiences and these were the lackings i won't go through in detail uh, later if you want you can go through that uh, but definitely if you analyze the past accidents you will come to know that what were the uh, causes and how it could have been avoided and that is the big learning for all of us if i compare the osha and ccps again this is a 14 element this is a 20 element and just the difference is they are structurized it they are, they represented it in more disciplined way and more structurized way almost all the 12 14 elements are same but they just introduced the concept of getting a more clarity in the process of the process safety management so again as a part of solution when we discuss about the process safety regulations if you want to go th through that the global process safety regulations i will suggest you to have this uh, read of this publication uh, a review of global process safety regulations for united states european union united kingdom china and india which was published in 2017 but in india also there are so many regulations so many regulations so many bodies different different bodies regulating bodies some uh, uh, the uh, accredited bodies some uh, private bodies are working and there are some rules and regulations but primarily for your purpose academics just i wanted to highlight factories act which was introduced in 1948 and then there were the amendments many times like 49 50 51 54 70 76 76 and now also even in 2000 also so factories act is the most important process safety regulation which is just uh, generalized general one not much more uh, explanatory for the process safety but general one but this manufacture storage and import of hazardous chemical rules 1989 which is the more dedicated to the process safety and the storage and handling of the hazardous chemicals and which was introduced as a part of the environmental protection act uh, uh, 1986 like that there is a petroleum rules of 2002 there is a oisd oil industry safety directorate which looks after the Uh, oil and gas installation storage handling transportation so india also there are so many process safety regulations but still we have the n number of uh, accidents and all the this has to be strengthened and that's why the last point what are the opportunities and challenges for psm implementation in india we know there is a huge opportunity because we are facing the accidents at least uh, three accidents in a month at least we are losing uh, 10 people in a month that way seriously we have the uh, uh, industrial accidents and that is why we have the opportunity and what are the challenges here in india <coughs> the unique challenge facing the indian companies adopting psm is the lack of a nodal agency on the lines of osha 
we don't have the dedicated nodal agency or apex body of the government which can look after the uh, psm implementation in india and that is the major major uh, lacking we have but fortunately we may expect that in coming 5 or 10 year we will have we will have definitely the body like osha and not uh, only osha occupational safety and health administration of usa but we may have a body like uh, uh, csb chemical safety board who who does do the uh, post accident investigation we may have the body like that in india and let's hope that we will have it quickly okay so the, that is the biggest challenge and second one the indian companies have started adopting the hsc at the design stage it is really good for the greenfield projects and the new facilities but still it is a challenge the for the older plants and the old facilities to uh, compiling with the process safety documentation and the reviewing the process hazard analysis studies still people are hesitated to go ahead with the safety studies and that is also one more challenge to have the process safety at the workplace but with more and more indian companies embarking on the journey of continual improvement in the safety psm is the definitely the next destination to ensure sustainable future and this is the keeping the hopes alive so now coming to the point we have discussed the solution process safety management what are the different process safety uh, management existing in the world uh, how how, how uh, it can be implemented it again up to the client or the customer how they want to strengthening their process safety accordingly they will choose ccps osha dupont model depends on the customers or their safety level and now it parts comes to the process safety learning for engineers so those who are a bit interested in the chemical industry or want to be a part of process safety at your level i will recommend this recommend you the, the book introduction to process safety for undergraduates and engineers written by ccps again as i told you ccps has written almost more than 50 books in the field of process safety and this is the most relevant book for the students engineering graduates and the young engineers and if you want to uh, learn more and more then just have a look on this weekly process safety week on this is free of cost just you have to create account on the aic aic website okay even you can take the membership of aic lifetime also or assistant also depends you can go and check what kind of memberships are available with the aic and the ccps and the most important to have the process safety and the risk management in your curriculum just out of interest uh, i went to the curriculum uh, for the department of chemical and biochemical engineering of the iit patna and i don't know exactly whether but i didn't found any uh, subject related to the process safety and risk engineering and if it is, if it is not there in the place i request to the faculty to the dean of academics and the director of iit patna and your board of governance to at least have one subject and one compulsory elective in the curriculum so that the graduates will have exposure to the uh, process safety before they switch from uh, college to the industry and that could be a good learning for you having the process safety and risk engineering or process safety and risk management in the curriculum or chemical process safety and hazards management in the curriculum depends how you choose the name of that uh, subject and how you make the content of that uh, particular elective or the uh, context so i think these three elements will be a good learning for you young engineers and the great quote by great person father of process safety accident do not occur because we are weak most of us are good and really we are good we are brilliant people indians and that is why we are leading at many places many organizations like uh, google uh, microsoft because and it is not because we are stupid most of us are quite intelligent but what why accident happens because we have got used to everything we see accidents were happening in 1974 accidents are happening in 2022 because we got just used to with that process and this is the thing that uh, uh, trevor clays mentioned and hope we will learn something from his this quote and we will try to have some definitive role in the coming years and it's the responsibility of each and every individual 
every stakeholder who are dealing with the chemical Indian Indian chemical industries. And again, whatever has happened, whatever is happening and whatever will happen, let's keep hope alive because we say Umedo pe dunya kaim hai and that is how it is. And that is why I like this picture very much. It is said everything will be filed in the end Morty and if it is not, it's not the end it. The great code, I like this code too much. And again, I would like to tell everyone, even including myself, it's never too late to start again. We can again uh, start, we can again think and again we can uh, bring the best and best safety regulations and we can uh, ensure that process safety management is implemented in India. And in coming years, we will definitely have that kind of system. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello? Sorry. Hello? Yeah. So that, please. Yeah. So, so yes, sir. You're audible. So yeah, yeah, sir. yeah, yeah. So, so thank yeah, you, sir. It was a really inform informative session. Yes, sir. So we can take a few questions. If uh, any yeah. among the attendees has any question, uh, you can please unmute and ask. I have a question, sir. <coughs> yeah, please come up. Uh, sir, actually, I visited small industrial units in Bivandi recently. The toxic liquid waste from dyeing fibers and, uh, go and uh, golden or silver coloring of plastic beads, etc., was directly discharged in sewage. I came to know that few of the units were heavily penalized just few days ago with no effect. No proper care of workers is taken in these small units. These people live here itself to save expenditure, thus getting exposed to air pollution also. Um, the air was actually unbreathable for me. How can such slow deadly poison be dealt? As in long term, this pollution will cause irreversible damage to society and environment. Uh, first of all, Utkarsh, uh, whatever you ask, that is more and less uh, relevant to the uh, means uh, your uh, uh, ke chemical operations and how disciplined you are and how you care about the environment and people uh, working at your workplace. This is the uh, not matter of any technical stuff. It's matter of the, uh, uh, the the sense of being a human. This is not just matter of what you've seen in Bhivandi or Gujarat, Anglesher or in some state of Maharashtra or Andhra Pradesh. It is across the country. This kind of things, uh, this uh, the, uh, kind of uh, uh, incidents can happen. So first thing, if you are working at such a place, I can't give you some technical answer to that. Because if you ask me technically, definitely you have to put the fingers on the uh, regulations. What is the regulations given by, suggested by OMFCC? What is suggested by the Environmental Protection Act 1986? You can go there and you can uh, challenge to the that particular uh, organization. And that is the work of the government when they see such a kind of incidents happening. And the uh, organization is not following the norms. Uh, and the standards that uh, that is mandatory for the organization. But one thing as a personal advice I can give you when you work in this kind of uh, environment, just don't be a part of it. Just don't be a supportive to it. Either you make a change to not allow to do that to do that. Uh, but I know that it is not much simple because being a graduate engineer training or the person who had just joined the organization few uh, few uh, days before or for a few months before. It is not much easy for you to tackle, but it is just the, the, uh, the management approach or the organization's approach to caring about the people, property and the environment. Nothing we can do, just your approach you can keep uh, clear. One thing, you know the properties of that chemical, accordingly you take care of yourself and you let your subordinate to take care. Like you have the mask, you should have the gloves, that the chemical or particular dyes and pigments or the solvent should not come in direct touch with your skin, your body. So the whatever harms that will be caused to you will be minimal and the least. 
that is the only way you can deal with this kind of situation and other part is just the regulatory part but at your own as a being a person you can have the personal safety uh, at the workplace and i, I hope i uh, uh, answered your question yes sir thank you yeah uh sir i have a question yeah uh sir do you think uh, that uh, uh, you told that india has encountered most number of deaths due to chemical processes uh in last decade sir so do you think that lack of knowledge is only uh, the cause of such accidents or are there any other causes uh means uh, if uh, pe uh, people were performing the experiment then they must be knowing that mic is a that uh, uh, not yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it does not need to be stored there it is a uh, means it yeah you please continue please continue it, me. so it could be means uh, done like that that it does not need to be stored so were there any external pressures or some situations which forced them to do so yeah actually if you uh, asking about the bhopal gas tragedy you know uh, in the 1984 uh, as per my knowledge there was a huge demand of the fertilizers because the farmers were the country our india has a huge demand of the food first for getting the uh, more uh, production more uh, crop protections uh, production you should have the uh, the supplements to the your uh, uh, crops and one part was the fertilizer supplements or fertilizer availability and that is why it was forced to have the uh, some particular number of uh, tons of production of particular fertilizer not only in bhopal but across the nation because to fulfill the demand of the uh, farmers and to bring the particular number of uh, tons of production of the crop for the indian citizens and that is why this union carbide was working and to meet the target they were not i think they were not at the uh, the, the benefit uh, they are not getting the benefits out of it they were uh, just uh, going at the loss so the strategy was how we can save the money when the uh, process is running and that is why you if you look at they bypass the refrigeration system they just stopped it they didn't uh, start it uh, and not only the bypassing the safety but people were not uh, uh, aware about the hazards of the that mic it is not only the people staying at the facility was not knowing the its impact but people outside even doctors uh, and the the uh, emergency clip players were not knowing what to do when this kind of deadliest gas release not only the mic but whatever it could be like styrene uh, released so it is just matter of awareness at the on site also and the off site also and today also uh, we are lacking in that kind of awareness on site as well as off site and as we today even we are today uh, lacking in that kind of awareness we are talking about the things in the 1984 where we were lacking much and much so there were not only the one reason human error but bypassing the safety uh, systems then uh, not carrying out the safety studies like a process hazard analysis not following the preventive maintenance safety maintenance uh not uh, properly uh, aware uh, awareing the people uh, training the people so all these causes all these things came together and that is why we saw the bhopal gas tragedy it is not a single cause it was the multiple cause event and definitely as you said the awareness the training to the people so my request to you all people all iit and nit and and the, the, the all the uh, engineering fraternity it is not just a matter of the uh, uh, the proud that we got the tag of iit and nit and the triple its or aims or whatever we study the best and best in the india but it is the responsibility to on our shoulders how we can bring uh, our country out of this kind of uh, incidents how we can make the chemical industry safer so 
you you we are the people that we have to understand we have the see now uh, in the last one hour we saw many accidents uh, their impact and how the uh, people property and the environment got damaged from it so when you go forward just have a look uh, on the process safety regulations be a part of it try uh, try to think over that and try to impl sorry implement it so i mean we are youngsters and we have that responsibilities we have that approach at least we can get aware ourselves and answering to my first question what you can do what is your role if you are at the facility that not following the rules but you have to be there for particular days particular months then at least you have to make sure that you are the safe and being a chemical engineer being a graduate being a educated person at least you know what are the hazardous chemicals at that facility what harms that can cause and how i have to get protected myself and at least people surrounded by me and that is why you have to first once you enter the facility once you get known to the process first go to the msds all the chemical msds in that facility just have a look and just get aware yourself with the chemicals that being handled in that facility and then you can make your strategy how you can spend the time at that facility and at least ensure the personal safety uh, thank you sir yeah so i guess uh, that brings us uh, towards the end of the session uh, on behalf of the entire team chesex and iit patna we are immensely thankful to you sir for the highly informative session i'm sure all of our attendees would have gained a lot from it and uh, your guidance would really help them to prepare for their future endeavors uh, we are also thankful to our professor dr parambil for helping us organize the session and also thanks to all these attendees i hope all of you enjoyed the session thank you again thank you sir yeah, before concluding i'll just I also like to say uh, thank uh, the speaker especially for taking his time in order to provide the, your outlook especially first on hands on outlook on industrial safety and as you suggested it is right uh, so currently we do not have any other uh, courses on safety which is in the curriculum but yeah. that is also something which i am also interested in into bringing into the curriculum because as you mentioned it is often in indian uh, academics chemical industry chemical engineering curriculum safety doesn't see a role but when yeah. you go into the industry that comes as the first thing that you need to know about it so that's a gap we are also trying to bridge uh, and, and uh, say so basically i was also interested in one maybe like quick question the sense say like uh, your professional journey how from a, being a chemical engineer how you moved on to uh, safety uh, aspects can you quickly tell so that yeah. the students can also know if they are interested into moving into this aspect how they can do that yeah uh, thanks sir for this question and uh, thanks for uh, the, the approach you uh, positive approach that you are going to uh, incorporate the process safety in your curriculum just uh, answering to your question when i graduated in 2013 i immediately started uh, uh, my uh, professional journey being a process engineer in adani group there i spent two years in the process you know, understanding the process of the edible oil refining then i had the that passion of uh, going for the higher education then i again uh, left the industry and went to the higher education to join mtech in nit trichy and spending two years there uh, i uh, came across many such uh, uh, the the programs and many such events so that i could get the sufficient knowledge about the chemical industries and i could explore that uh, possibilities how i can proceed further i had a chance to join the r&d i had the chance to join the manufacturing like a productions i had the chance to join the process design and luckily uh, i had the subject industrial safety and risk uh, management in our uh, mtech first year i studied that and as i had the two years of work experience i uh, could take much interest in that i topped that subject not only topped that subject but i topped the mtech in at an it and the, even and I, I one thing i want to would like to share with the students i took the some lectures on my class itself i took three lectures on mtech class i i st I, i delivered the lecture to the my uh, the, the colleagues uh, and my uh, the, uh, friends in the mtech almost we had a 20 uh, uh, 20 people batch in 2015 
so that generated interest to me uh, so coming from the industrial uh, uh, two years experience and uh, fortunately i got placed in the chola ms and that was the process safety consultancy so uh, i i think uh, whatever passion i had immediately got brought me the chola ms uh, into the action i joined chola ms and then i have spending some months uh, in the chennai headquarter i joined the gexcon india again it is a process safety consulting uh, company and to, it is a world leading company in the field of of higher explosion dispersion and the risk modeling so in last 4 5 years i have got the great interest in this field and that is why i decided to continue my uh, career in this uh, particular field and i might request to all the chemical engineer doesn't matter whether you come into the process safety and risk management or consultancy or the uh, technical safety but being a chemical engineer being a part of the chemical industry or the mechanical engineering uh, company whatever you must aware of these things it is must for you because you know what will happen at what minute of your life and in our and indian attitude we say kuch nahi hota i know my friends kuch nahi hota nothing will happen that i too know but jab hoga jab kuch hota hai to kuch bachta bhi nahi you might have seen the bullet uh, beirut explosion there was nothing simply the plane land and the like a football ground was there after the explosion you see the bhopal gas tragedy 40000 people died because when it happens nothing will remain to and that is also truth so rather than saying kuch nahi hota that kind of indian attitude just let be a serious at least when you are at the workplace or when you are going to start your career thank you thank you very much for your uh... nice yeah. words and i think like uh, i hope many students would be uh, say encouraged in order to look uh, into this area as well and to take this uh, seriously once they join the industry thanks a lot yeah thanks thanks thank you so much sir for giving me an opportunity i it's my pleasure i always like to interact with the people and you know now this is one one hour 30 minutes we exceeded the time but doesn't matter for me even i can spend with more 30 minutes but my motto is the young graduates like you i think myself even in my graduation there was no subject of process safety and risk management and or i could even more better contribute to to the my last 7 years so hopefully you will learn that you will study that and you will bring something uh, new for our country if you have any question you please ask now Hello, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I think there are no questions now. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, okay. And and thank session. you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks you, a lot. Thanks everyone for uh, listening me, listening me patiently. Thanks everyone. Have a nice day, and thank have you, a sir. nice career too. Thank you, sir. Uh, very inspiring for me. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Bye bye.